so hello all of you welcome back and in this video we are going to learn a very interesting and extremely useful uh, operation extremely useful function of this actuarial calculator now the first thing that we are going to do in this is storing and clearing values so how to do that first of all before we learn how to store let's learn how to clear so that we are sure that our calculator is uh clear from all kinds of stored memory so how to go about that we all can see on top of the nine number button we have clr written in yellow right so we press shift and nine we are getting again another question input what all do we want to clear we want to clear everything one is setup two is memory and three is all now setup we've already seen a few things that we do in the setup so to change it back to default we click one for the memory is what we are going to learn now after this and for all includes setup as well as memory so let's say <coughs> right now we just want to clear the memory so i'm pressing two equal to means yes ac means cancel i want to clear the memory so i press equal to it is done now let's see how to store values so for example in uh, long questions when you're solving long questions at every step you are getting a new value which let's say at the end of your answer you have to fit it into a final equation to get your answer so let's say first i'm performing a calculation random calculation so i get this value 508.571429 now i want to store this value because this exact value i have to use later on now when i will be typing it in it is not possible to type i mean it's of course possible but it will be very tedious very time consuming to enter this entire value into our equation and we will not have just one value we might have five six values like this which we will have to remember or note down and then again type it so instead what we do is we store this value as a letter or as a variable how to do that <coughs> for storing we can see there is an rcl button don't press the rcl button the sto written in yellow on top of that button is the button for storing so how to activate it it's in yellow so we press shift and store now you see there is no change on the calculator screen except a small sto on the upper bar now we have to choose which letter should represent this number we can see in red we have a b c d e f x y and m now these nine letters you have for storing your values so let's say i want to store this value in the letter a so i click this so as you can see now my screen has changed that this answer is stored in a all right so now i click ac now let's say i press alpha a because a is written in red i press this button so now i'm getting this output now let's say i want uh, i want another input so i'm calculating so i'm getting this now i want to store it again what is the step for storing shift store let's say i'm storing this in b now i want to add my first and second answers how do i do that alpha a plus alpha b so now we are getting 550 okay so this is about storing different values in your calculator now make sure that before you start your next operation you clear your memory again how to do that shift 9 clear memory so now if i press a i'm not getting anything because whatever i had stored in a has now been cleared now whatever new input i give a will store that as its value next we have a very important thing that is the table mode used for interpolation very widely used in your actuarial science papers so as i have written table mode 
In your calculators, there are primarily three modes. One is the computation mode, which is actually the mode which we are using right now. The COMP mode. How did I uh, arrive at this menu? There is the mode button just beside the on button. You can see there's a comp mode, a stat mode and a table mode. Currently we are on the comp mode, which is basically the basic mathematics mode. The stat mode will be covered in a separate video. Now for uh, interpolation, we go into the table mode. So let's press three for table mode. Now, what does the table mode do? <coughs> it solves equations for us. It solves equations for us. Now, make sure whatever equation you want to solve in that all the variable, all the uh, variable elements should be on one side and the constants can either be on the same side or on the other side. But one side has to be variable free. So for example, in the uh, example I have written over here, my constant is 100. It is on one side and the variables are on the other side. Now I can even write this as, I can write this like this which means I'm just taking the constant also on the same side. This is also acceptable, but I cannot take the one of the variables to the other side because that would mean that one variable we have on one side and the other on the other side, right? So going back to my original equation, now I want to solve for I. I want to solve for i. How to solve for i? We use the table mode or what we call interpolation. In manually when we perform interpolation, what do we have to do? We have to uh, do a hit and trial method usually wherein we say let's say i lies between 5% and 10%. We calculate with i at 5%, with i at 10% and then we use the interpolation formula which is fx minus fx1 by fx2 minus fx1 is equal to x minus x1 by x2 minus x1. So this is the formula we use for interpolation. Now instead of go uh, number one, we get a very approximate answer using this formula and number two, it can be a very long process if your hit and trial numbers are not accurate or not close to the real answer, right? So what we do over here, over here, this entire process is done for us by the calculator itself. How do we go about it? Of course, <coughs> first we have to input the equation. How do we input the equation? We only input one side. And which side is that? Of course, the side with the variables. So let's say I want to type out this equation. So I open my fraction mode. Numerator is 50 denominator is 1 plus now whatever variable in your answer script in your answers you can write any variable but for the calculator the variable is always x because as you can see it is calculating for fx so how to get x alpha x alpha x okay bracket close now once I close the bracket and I press power, so the power will be applied to the entire bracket and not just x. That is the reason why we had to use the brackets. Okay, so 4. Then I move out of the power first. So as you can see, my cursor has moved to the normal alignment. Then I again press the right navigation. So now I move out of the fraction. Plus, again, 40 and denominator we have 1 plus x to the power 6, right? So now I have input my entire RHS. Next, I press equal to. Now the calculator starts talking to you. It will ask you for a start value and end value. So first of all, let's say over here I know that i is some interest rate. So I want 5%. 5% means 0.05. Then it will ask you for an end rate, right? It is basically start rate is nothing but x1, end rate is nothing but x2. 
So let's say I want to end at 10%. So that is point 1. Step. What is step? Step will tell me between 5% and 10%. How many calculations or at what intervals do I want my calculator to show me answers? What will the calculator do? If I give a step of let's say 0 0.01. 0 0.01 means 1%. Then the calculator will show me answers for 5%, 6%, 7%, 8%, 9%, 10%, 11%, 12%. and 10%. So from my start value to my end value, at every 1% gap, it will show me the value this expression will take. So let's see. Let's put the step as 0 0.01. Then I press equal to. <coughs> so you can see the calculator has returned me six values as I had mentioned over here it has returned six values to me now I can see that out of these six values at 5% it is 70.9 and at 10% it is 56.7 what value do I need I need this equation to be equal to 100 correct so none of these are there which means my answer is actually less than 5% also so now what should I do? I should try interpolating between a little lower values. So I press AC. I press AC. It takes me back to my equation area. Again I press equal to. This time let's say I will start with 1% and I will end at 3%. And I am increasing the step to 0 0.001. So now as I can see. Even at 1%, even at 1%, I'm not getting an answer. Even at 1%, I'm not getting an answer. It is 85.73. So now I will interpolate between 0 and 1. So I will start at 0. I will start end at 1. And I will keep a step of 0 0.001. Oh, this is wrong. It means actually the equation which I have written is going into negative because even at zero we are not getting an answer. So this was just because I obviously randomly took this equation. Let's change this value a little. Let's make this 100 um, 80 for now. Let's make it 80 for now. So let's see where are we reaching 80. Definitely not between 0 and 1 because 1 is 85.73. So now let's try between, let's try the entire equation again from 1 to 2. 50 divided by 1 plus x whole to the power 4 moving out plus 40 divided by 1 plus x. whole to the power 6. I am starting with 0 0.02 ending with 0 0.03. Okay. At a step of 0 0.001. So now we can see that <coughs> at 0 0.024 the value is 80.169 and at 0 0.025 it is 79.7 which means somewhere between 2.4% and 2.5% we got exact 80. So now let's try it out 0 0.024 to 0 0.025 and now we will increase the step because we want a more accurate answer. Now over here we can see 80.017 and it uh, 79.979 so we can ca keep continuing this process but in actual life when we uh, solve our sums we don't have to take the process so many times you can uh, once you are done with let's say three to four decimal places it is done you take the one which is nearer so 80.017 is 17 steps ahead and 79.979 is actually 21 steps behind.
correct from the figure which we want that is 80 so that means we will take the answer as i equal to 0 0.0244 which is 2.44 percent all right so that is about the table mode which we can use very easily and efficiently for interpolation thank you all of you